Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kim Barrett Show. I am your host, Kim Barrett, and on today's episode, we are joined by the lovely Miss Anna. We are going to be diving into all the key areas in your DNA that make you successful. What are the areas you need to tap into for your career, for your business, for your life to ensure that you're in alignment and you're not just sitting there wondering, why am I here? Why am I doing this? So if you've ever asked yourself those questions, this is an episode you will not want to miss. And of course, if we can help you grow your business, if that's your if that's your thing, then head over to marketingmogul.com.au where we've got everything that you need there. But until then, let's jump into the show. Anna, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you making the time. It is my pleasure. It's great to have you here. here. Glad to be here. Now, I always like to start the podcast the same way every time, which is if I met you at a party and we were chatting Mm -hmm. away and I said, Anna, what is it that you actually do? What's your go-to answer? Well, I always start short and sweet with, I'm a career coach. And then everybody goes, oh my God, I wish I had met you 10 years ago when I needed it. (laughs) So how do you do it? And then I talk about how I use gold standard assessments and coaching methods to get to the five essential elements for success that are in your personal DNA. So you get to base your career choices on your actual neurobiology and what you're set up for for success. Yeah, I'd love to dive into that. How did you come across that? Because I've I've had and spoken to and had different career coaches on the podcast and met them in person and done some work for them. And it's something completely different that I have never heard of before. So break that down. Like, how did that come? Like, how did you come across this? How did it come into your world? As it does for all of us, life handed it to me in a, in a very life university kind of way. I was myself, you know, young, professional, doing the big consulting for management companies, but really bottoming out inside. And just knew I I wasn't in the right place. And so I went ahead and made it my quest to find out who am I? Why am I here? Objectively, but also with heart too. You know, mixing the intellect, the heart and the the body DNA all together. And I I stumbled across um, actually a test that probably most people have taken in in assessment, which is the Myers-Briggs. And for the first, I had taken it four other times. Never tested as my true self, always tested as what I thought I should be. And this time I was at the point where I was ready to be completely honest. I was just ready to know what was right for me. So I also had someone explain it to me in a way that I had never had it explained before, where it showed my brain's optimal focus, where it showed my blind spots and how how to integrate those, how to improve my leadership style, my decision-making style. And I just said, oh my God. I'm so cool. I love me. <laughs> I I got to I got to get going on this. And so then I looked into other assessments that um assess different aspects of the whole person and then uh, I put that together into who I am and why I'm here, which is uh adult education around a passion for helping people bring out their best potential and live a fulfilling life. So the the, the path was uh, my very own and I've turned that into my method. That's amazing. And so what, obviously the, you kind of like self-inspired to then go out and, and, and share it with more people. What made you want to go down the route of obviously bringing it into the, into the career world? Cause I'm sure you probably could have took several different paths with that sort of new, newfound like knowledge and information. Oh yes. And I have, I have, you know, helped people through their midlife crisis. I have helped people through their <laughs> romantic relationships. They're, you know, decision-making based on who you are in your DNA covers every part of life. But for me, I just think back to myself as a college student, just, I had such energy and such excitement about doing something to make a difference in the world. And I was so disappointed when I, when I got out into the real world and it just wasn't happening for me. And so I just look back on that, you know, 18 year old sitting there in a college lecture. And I just think I want her to know, I want her to know her DNA for success. And she can take that with her for her whole life. And of course, 
I mean, I've even worked with 70 year olds who are, you know, retired and just, you know, been through cancer, rethinking their life. What am I? I can't just sit here like I have been. What do I want to do? And so walking them through and for the first time in, you know, 70 years of living saying, oh my God, I get myself and I like myself. And I'm super excited to step into this, this career direction or volunteer direction or whatever it may be at that age. So it, it's, it's so rewarding to get to share it and see the light bulb go on in another person. I know who I am. I know I am here and I can confidently step forward. That's amazing. And you mentioned before that obviously you had taken several different tests and whatnot before mm-hmm. and kind of lied a little bit to yourself on the, on the actual out, outcomes and answers with your new clients coming on um, that start working with you. Do you have to do a little bit of, um, I'm sure the answer is probably going to be yes, but do you have to do a bit of coaching to get them? Cause I'm sure that they could come through and like work through your process and still kind of like fudge, fudge the results a little bit to who they think they want to be. Like, how does that process kind of work? You're absolutely right. And because I did that myself, I know that that's how people approach assessments, um, especially if they're wired with certain drives to, you know, look a certain way, et cetera. So I am very uh, precise and about helping them think about how to answer the questions before they go in, thinking them about what is the importance of them giving um, an actual outcome on the assessment that is actually who they are, unless they want to keep going down the road to crazy town, then they need to answer as they, who they are when they were their happiest, best self and uh, feeling most themselves. So that's just the prep. And then afterwards, after we get their assessment, we go through it very carefully and ensure that that is their correct type. And, you know, people will come out and say, well, I answered it that way because I thought I should have answered. I thought that's what you wanted me to say. So people, you know, people can catch themselves there. And then we have to we have to say, okay, we'll readjust the outcome of this. And <laughs> now we know who you really are. Yeah, that's amazing. Because yeah, I can, when you were saying that, I was like, yeah, I'm sure there's people. And then even those, especially those competitive types, they're like, oh, I want to answer in the way that's going to get me the, the best score, that's going to make me look the best and perceive the best. <laughs> and, uh, I know there's quite a few uh, members of my family that would be on that side of the fence where <laughs> they'd be just like trying to shoot it, but like, oh, yeah. someone got this, got this result, so I want to try and beat it. Oh, yeah. It seems to happen quite regularly. <laughs> competitive. Yeah. Well, yep. And I realized I got no real data from it that helped me at all. So it paid off then to really answer it honestly. And, and now so, I can compete in something that I'm really good at. So that's even better. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I love that. So once someone gets that and understands themselves, like what are some of the aspects that they can then obviously tap into? What are some of the things that start to change for them from that perspective? Yes. Well, there's five layers to what they learn about themselves. One is their raw talents that are wired in their brain to be fast and accurate at. And another I talked about was the brain's optimal focus and their blind spots that need to be integrated into how they grow. And the third is their deepest drives. And once, you know, we uncover our deepest drives, we can see, ooh, I was making decisions based on something I didn't even realize that I would sacrifice anything else for. It's like you were saying before, to beat the competition, to look good, to prove to whoever that I'm valuable and successful, um, to make sure I never get trapped, you know, all, all of the different reasons that we have to be safe. And so that's always one of the biggest that they walk away with. And we always switch it from, yeah, I'm wired to have a focus on, say, for example, winning quality giving quality in everything that I do. But I don't want to think about that anymore in terms of, oh, I got to prove it. But I want to think about it in terms of, yep, I add value wherever I go. Where do I want to add value now? And then plug that into their most fascinating interests, their deepest values, and their other strengths that we evaluated. So it puts it all together into not just the data of, oh, you'd be good at this, but also why are you doing it? And how can you do it from the healthiest drives that are within you? So, and when people work with you and they go through this and they understand these things, 
how often is it a pretty much a being that obviously you are a coach in the career space, how often is it a flip of a, of a career or a change of career or like going and starting a business? Like what, cause it sounds like to me as well, when I hear some of the things, I was like, I feel like there could be a lot of uh, new business owners formed after they kind of chat with you. Cause they might be like, do I want to actually have a job like this? Like what's the sort of breakdown mm-hmm. after like, what are some of the changes that you see? Definitely entrepreneurship comes out of it. People see that, oh my God, I've been dreaming about this since I was a little kid and I never thought I could actually do it. So I did so many other years being a flight attendant and being a this and being a that and being a manager. And it turns out that I have all the talent to be the designer. I have all the raw talent for it. No wonder I do it all the time in my spare time. And so then they just walk out with this confidence like, yeah. I can make this work. I've got talents and I've actually been developing it. You know, even though it's been a hobby, I've been developing expertise in it for 40 years. So I have a great platform to go on from there. And also I know the heart of why I want to design for people now. I know what, what I want to bring into their space. So they're just confident and they go out and they can get started right away. But also you'll have college students that, are dropping out because they don't like their major, they feel lost. And they, you know, after we've gone through the program, they'll say, okay, I know what I want to be in college for. I'm not dropping out anymore. I don't have to just go home and live with my parents perpetually. I have something I want to contribute out in the world and I know what it is and I know how I'm going to do it. Even with pandemic coming, you know, new college students coming out into the marketplace, some of them are the first to be let go, but they would say, this hasn't shaken my confidence at all because I know exactly who I am, why I'm here and what I'm doing. And I know I'll get there. So those are two examples. Um, Also, people just re-engineer their job where they are. A great example, a woman was working in a tech organization and all day long, she was taking tech support calls and saying, uh, you know, emergencies basically that she was dealing with with others. And she's just started to get how you feel about your career really affects how you feel about yourself and your whole life. So she was feeling like, I guess I'm good at nothing. I I don't even like myself anymore. I should probably leave this job. But after looking at her results, she realized, oh my gosh, I've put in two years. I know everything about this tech support role, but I am wired to be a manager and make sure the resources get to the tech support people. So with that, she Um, Went into her boss, put in her application for a management role, was moved right in and has been enjoying her job ever since and really getting such great feedback about the value she adds for the company. So there's another example of how it can turn out. And what are some of the signs for people? Because obviously, as you said, you probably don't want to get to the point where you're like, I hate this. Do I even like myself type scenario? Like, What are some of the signs that people maybe aren't in alignment and they're not tapping into those five key areas? Like, What are some of the indicators for people? If you're losing energy a lot at work, you feel drained a lot. If you feel like you're working harder than everybody else, but you're not getting the results that they are or you're not getting ahead. If you actually are beginning to feel maybe even depressed, like what's even the point? Um, Definitely asking yourself, what value do I add? Why am I here? Questions like, is this it? You know, have I already reached the top and now there's nothing else to go for? Or is there nothing more fulfilling? When you find yourself in any of those spaces, that is your inner compass, putting pressure on you to take a look at who you really are wired to be and get more in alignment with that. And I love that it doesn't have to be like, well, gee, that's, there's something wrong with you. It's actually your body and your mind's way and your subconscious way of of knocking on your door saying, hey, pay attention, something's up. There's something better for you. So um, that's another great thing that people take away is, yeah, um, okay, I know how to listen to my inner voice now to keep me on track as I course correct along this new career path. And do you, is there anything that people need to do once they have that understanding to make sure that they don't kind of slip back? Because I could imagine as well that going through and having these understanding is great, but sometimes it's like it can be perceived as like now you've got a, a new huge mountain to climb and it might be kind of easy to backslide a little bit for some people. I love to do kind of a long, longer term accountability program with my clients so that it's not just, boom, you got your data download. It's you've got your plan. 
And you've got accountability to take the next step and the next step and the next step. And me continually reminding me of who you found out you were. And I, I do that sometimes over, over three months, sometimes over six months, but at least for 90 days, because that's how long it takes to rewire the brain and how you have been thinking about yourself and what you uh, have been thinking about what you can and can't do in the world. And your motivations are a key part of that too, rewiring those. So I stick with them and uh, provide that accountability. Good question. And you mentioned there like rewiring your motivations, like how do how do people go about doing that? Like, what is what does that kind of look like? <laughs> well, it starts with awareness. I had a marketing executive talking with me the other day, and she was saying, "Well, I have achieved everything. I've been the head of firms. I've been the head of in-house corporate marketing. I've been I've done it all. I have ten job offers I could go to now, but because I've been working from home more the last year and a half." I realize I actually would love to step back from the super fast pace a little bit, from the constant flying and being around and spend time with my eight-year-old and do some nonprofit work that I have an idea for improving our community. And she said, but I'll never do it. And I, I said, well, why won't you ever do it? She said, because I have to have a sexy job. And I said, why do you have to have a sexy job? Why do you have to make more money than the the money you already have, you know, made? And and she said, oh my God, it's because I have to prove to my parents that I have value and I'm worthwhile and lovable. So it goes really down deep. Those deep motives do down to our childhoods, down to uh, areas that we will do anything to protect. So once she realized it though, she could say, oh, all right. I think I've already proven it. Check. Check the box. I've proven everything. Now let's take a different approach to value and worth. Let's say, what do I want to provide value in next? And then she was free to make her choice. Mm, I like that. That's awesome. You've given a few really good examples there of like the transformation people have had. Have you got any other really cool kind of examples or stories of people where they've like started like similar to that lady? And then what's the what the outcome was on the other side? Oh, yes. Let me think. Um, I know one woman, she was, uh, she had actually done a whole career in marketing. And she, had, it's funny, I'm having a career with stories of folks that I've, I helped in marketing. Um, she uh, became a stay at home mom. Her husband was deployed to Iraq. And so she was really, you know, on deck, all hands on deck for a couple of years and started to lose herself. Like, who am I? Now, wait a minute. What, what do I really want to do in this world? Which is so common for those who spend a lot of time, you know, just managing the family and the kids. So we realized, we recognized that she spent all her free time on her phone, Googling psychology, Googling self-development, Googling how to deal with this, that, or the other thing. And, and really philosophical. How does, you know, what's our place here in the world? How, how do we operate best? How do we get all tangled into knots? And then how do we get untangled so we can really do something and be ourselves? And so, you know, she realized, okay, I could do this as a hobby for the rest of my life and not really get anything from it. Or I could plug all those hours that I'm spending on my phone researching this as a hobby into getting my master's degree and becoming a licensed counselor. So now she's on that path and she is working with, with her own clients now. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's funny, as you say, like there's so many things, I suppose, that people do as a sidebar type thing, but really it could be, it could be what their, you know, their true passion is behind it. And I suppose it's uh, once you've got that kind of fire behind you, it's pretty easy to, to grow and accelerate in different career areas and things like that as well. That's right. You're, you know, when you're following what you're wired to be good at, you really develop skill and mastery quickly. And so then you need, you know, to know how to apply your DNA to leadership and growth as well. So yes, definitely. And now, Anna, as we get in towards the end of our time here together, I really like to ask the same question at the end of every podcast as well, which is, is there a question which I didn't ask you that I should have? Well, if we were still at the party and you wanted to know a little bit more, I would definitely ask you. What is, what'd you love to do as a kid? What'd you love to spend your time on before you had any of these other obligations or any of these 
things you had to prove or be or do? What were you naturally drawn to? And that's always a great indicator of something that your brain and body absolutely love to do. And a key for, you know, plugging yourself into a career in that direction. So what, what was it for you when, uh, when, when you were a kid? For me, I always say I've been a, I've been a life coach since I was 12 years old. <laughs> I have, I have six younger brothers and sisters and oh, wow. I would take my sisters out into the, out into the field or the circle of trees and sit down and say, okay, what do you want to learn about becoming a young woman? Let me, let me, you know, show you who you are and you can ask any questions. Every, all questions are good, you know, just encouraging and helping them to see who they are and to feel free to like, feel like they can know about life and not have to just figure it out themselves. So (laughs) I've been life coaching since I was 12 and I still get the same feeling of, I actually purposefully tap back into that feeling when I'm writing articles, working with clients and back in the circle of birch trees in the woods with my sisters. And we're just, I am just letting them be seen and find out who they are and ask, am I really anybody? Do I really have any strengths? Can I really do this? And be able to give them data that says absolutely yes. It's amazing. I love that. I was not expecting that as an answer, by the way. That's really cool. Um, <laughs> that you were doing that since 12 years old. That's amazing. Um, and now for anyone that's listened to this, Anna, and they're like, oh, I want to find out a bit more, like what you're up to, what you're doing. Where's the best place for them to connect with you online? I would say my website is the best place, which is www.authenticcorecoach.com. All three words. And there's resources there for you to, there's a free quiz. You can start to get to know some of your natural raw talents right away. And there's a a beta version of my new online course that will give you a deeper introduction to each one of the elements of your DNA for success. And then DIY questions. So you can start thinking about it for yourself and maybe coming up with some answers. Amazing. So guys, wherever you're listening or watching to this, Check the links above or below. We'll have a link to um, Anna's website there so you guys can go out there and find more about what she's up to. And if you know someone who's maybe shared some of those things with you personally that Anna mentioned earlier earlier about like asking where they're at, what's going on for themselves, is, is this it or anything like that, please do share this episode with them so they can hear uh, some of Anna's wisdom and then hopefully go and connect and, and learn a little bit more from her um, as well. So And thank you so much for joining me and making the time to come on today. Really appreciate it. This has been so fun. I've enjoyed answering your questions, Kim. It's been great. Thank you, Anna. And we'll speak to you soon.